What's up, all my folks out in YouTube land? Daryl, also known as The Finisher. I'm back, man. It's been a little bit of a break. Had a lot of things going on personally, but we're back, man. And we, we, we're going to go on a run here. Anyway, topic of today. You're going to lose customers, man. You know, sometimes you got to fire customers. I know what some of y'all saying. You can't fire customers. The customer is the boss. Well, look, maybe in your world, the customer is the boss. In my world, I can fire a customer because me and the customers, we're on the same page. We're on the same level, right? We're, we're, we're going into a partnership. And sometimes in this partnership, things don't work out, you know, for one reason or another. Now, one of the best parts of this, of this handyman business is that, especially if you're a small company or something like that, where you're not Lowe's, you're not Home Depot, you're not one of these giant stores or Walmart or whatever, where you need all the customers that come in in the store, you need to patronize every customer, right? That's, that's, a, that's a huge thing because <laughs> you have to be compatible with the people that you work for. Now, I'm not saying that you gotta be friends with them, you know, but you gotta be able to work and feel comfortable and they feel comfortable and everybody is, it's a good working relationship. Not everybody is like that. And you know, so the, what the stores do, or any kind of stores, restaurants or whatever, they hire managers. They hire managers, they train them, shift managers. And one of their biggest jobs is dealing with problem customers, right? So if you haven't worked anywhere with any kind of, any kind of customer base, you know that you're gonna have issues with customers and some customers you can't please, no matter what you do, they're gonna have an issue. Every time they walk into that store, they're gonna have an issue. Well, it's no different with you. You're gonna have people that are just gonna have an issue because they don't like your price. They don't like your face. Okay. I had one. I had one customer tell me once. Um, somebody leave me a re review one time saying, "Well, he wasn't very nice." First time I heard that in my entire life. I wasn't a nice guy. I'm always a nice guy. You know what I mean? That's like one of my selling points. But it doesn't matter. You're not gonna be compatible with everybody, and if you get them out the door before you get started. Hey, that's the best case scenario. So, one situation where you're gonna lose customers is that you just get too busy, you know, uh, or your prices go up too high. And there's this is a beautiful thing, you know what I mean? Like some customers you hate to see go, man. I had a customer that early on, you know, they provided me with a lot of work. And, um, but the thing was that every time they called, I was there, you know what I mean? Like they were able to call today and I might be able to be there this afternoon or at the latest, like in a, like the next day, because that's how I just didn't have enough work to just be busy for so long, right? But then once I got to the point where I was just busy, I was too busy. Like I might've been two weeks away from being able to get to their project. They couldn't take it. It just, you know, it didn't matter how good my work was. It didn't matter anything. I mean, and my prices were low at the time too, but it just didn't matter any of that. Even though my prices were low, they just still didn't want to wait. When they had the idea that they wanted the job done, that was it. They just wanted the job done then and there. And you know what? I respect that. You know what I mean? We didn't argue. It wasn't anything. Lady called me and she just was like, you know what? Uh, yeah, for these projects, we, we just gonna have to find somebody else because we just, you know, I mean, we just, they wanted it done then. And I was like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I can't just cancel all the jobs on my schedule and just go to your house. So. It's just what it was, you know what I mean? There was no hard feelings. I was like, I understand. Hey, I'm still got love for you. When I see him out in public, I still speak to him and everything. So no, no, no hard feelings. It's just, you know, I lost a customer, but not for a bad reason. You know, the reason why I lost him was because, hey, I got all kind of business, baby. I'm growing and you know, some customers are not gonna be compatible with that. And I can respect that, but you're gonna lose them. Sometimes you're just gonna lose customers because your price is too high, you know? It's just, and, and that's not a bad thing. You know, you get to a point where, hey, business has grown. You understand, like I keep telling y'all, you understand you gotta raise your prices. You gotta have a comfortable price. I'll be doing a video soon about um, easy ways to come up with prices, all right? But, you know, and everybody's not gonna follow you. And this is what a lot of fields, you know, you ask anybody, ask people in landscaping and as the guys who do lawn care, they raise their prices up for cutting grass, you know, they might lose a, a ton of customers just for $5 uh, shift in, in how much they charge. It's just how it is. There's a lot of customers who just don't care. They don't care about you. They don't, they want quality work. They just don't want to pay. You know, it, it's just, it's just, that's how it is. And 
I told I'm at a point where I, like I said, I, I, of course, I'd much rather just lose the customers. You know, what I'm not doing is uh, the, the days are over of me doing jobs that I regret. And the whole time I'm doing, I'm like, man, you know, I wish I would have charged more. I used to tell my wife that on my tombstone, that's what it's going to say. Uh, Daryl, the finisher, I should have charged more, in quotes. Man, I wish I would have charged more for this job, in quotes. Because that was the story of my life for a while. It ain't that no more. Just because you got to move on because you're going to lose customers and you got to just accept that. It's okay. It's okay. So there are all types of reasons. Another one, I had a customer not too long ago who I did a lot of work for, man. I mean, I painted her whole house, the interior. It's the first house I ever painted the entire interior of her house by myself, right? A lot of work. But some people, man, uh, it just, some people are just, they're hard to work with uh, because they're very needy, right? Uh, but earlier I was telling you about the people who, who when they wanted something done, they kind of wanted it done right then. And I don't have no problem with that. Uh, then there's another type that are just very needy. And I had it was a customer that, I mean, just wanted me to keep in constant contact like every day. And in some days it was like she wanted to, you know, give her reassurance of that, you know, I didn't forget about her. And it's just that I'm not in a relationship. With, I was just not that type of relationship. You know what I mean? And if, and if it was, and I was getting bothered every couple, I, you know, you, she would have had to go too. You know what I mean? I can't do that. I got to work. I got to work. I'm a, I'm a grown man out here. I got, I got, I don't have time to just uh, cater to your feelings. And that's, you know, it's kind of what I was doing in the situation. I'm catering to uh, 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 customers' feelings. And then eventually she did. She left me a message, said, you know what? Don't call me. Just, I don't like the way I'm being treated. And I was like, Okay, <laughs> your wish granted. You know what I mean? Just, just, yes. You know, if I was a genie, that's what I would have done. Nah, so I'm not, I'm not calling her. I'm not going to, you know, no, it's not going to be, I got to call you and talk to you and, and, and beg for some kind of forgiveness or please don't leave a bad review. I don't care. Just, sometimes it's just, they just have to go. And it's crazy because, you know, I have a great relationship with the vast majority of my customers. You know what I mean? I have, I literally have, uh, Right now, uh, I just finished the basement. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show y'all. I didn't record finishing the drywall in the basement, but I might record some of the other stuff down there. Um, but that customer, you know, they got a gated driveway and stuff. They just gave me like the garage door opener key to the gate. Gave me all the access codes to the house to the so I can get straight into the basement without having to bother them. And they just like, hey, come and go as you please, man. Just here's the numbers. Here's the gate thing. Whatever. We trust you. Just hey, do your thing. And I'm not saying everybody has to be like that as a customer. I'm just saying I, you can't. It's, just, it's hard to go from that <laughs> to dealing with people who are just on edge about the, you know, uh, $100 that they spent with you versus these other people who spend, you know, four or $5,000 with you and they're just like, hey, come and go. Just, you know. Well, I've already told you that sometimes you're going to just lose customers. It's just the name of the game. On YouTube, I'm going to lose subscribers. It's just it's just how it goes. There's nobody, who, there's no such thing as 100% success in anything. You're going to lose something, right? It's, but sometimes I'm just saying it's a good thing. Uh, one of these days, we'll talk about uh, understanding and learning how to vet customers, right? Well, I just had a situation. I had to fire a customer, which is not the first time, but it, it, but it is rare. It's very rare that I have to fire a customer. Right, but I had to fire this dude before we even started. So let me let me tell you what happened. It, just in case you run into one of these situations, that you know, a lot of people, you know, I don't want to sell you the handyman business or all these, you know, uh, trade businesses as the most uh, most wonderful thing ever. And there's never an issue, and it's just money pours from the heavens and lands in your pockets, man. And it's just it's a beautiful thing. No. Sometimes you have issues that you're gonna have to deal with. Sometimes you're gonna have to have very uncomfortable conversations with customers. Sometimes you're gonna have to fire customers. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's just like that. So, situation. I got a referral, because you know most of my jobs at this point are referrals and uh, or just returning customers. Got a referral from a customer, uh, one of his neighbors, that recommended them to me. So I went over to the guy's house to do the estimate. He's walking around, you know, 
NXT trying to look like the Terminator. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to be all just, you know, uh, he's ex-military. And look, I come from a family of military people. Everybody don't have that demeanor that they get all stiff and, you know, just, you know, got to just try to intimidate whoever's kind of come to work in their house. It's just, to me, it's ridiculous. Like, dude, like, I'm just coming here to fix some drywall. <laughs> I don't need all that. But it's just some people are trained like that. And the guy was older. He was in the 70s. And a lot of people who are just, just stuck in their ways, you know, it's just, this is what they do. They're stiff. This is how it is. And this is what it's going to be until they out of here. Okay. Okay. I get it. That doesn't bother me. I can work with people like that. People with whatever high expectations. I'm good. Hey, like that's all I told y'all before. Customer, pull up a chair. As long as you, you're you you're not irritating, man, we can just have a conversation while I'm working. I, I love to hear people's stories and everything. So um, I said, oh, that's good to me. So I walked around, got this guy's estimate or whatever. I ended up, for some reason, it's another one of these uh, red flags. These red, I'm going to give you all some of the red flags along the way, though, right? Super stiff. That's a little bit of a red flag, but not terrible. Number two, for some reason, the guy would never, wouldn't, didn't give me his last name. I've never had that in person. I've had people not give me their last names um, on the phone, and that's automatic red flag. And to me, at this point in the game, it's an automatic, like, I just don't do business with you because why would you call me but then not give me your information? It's ridiculous. So... You know, people want, they, they, I guess they want to play a game. Well, I'm not playing. But I was trying. It was a referral. I, you know, I was trying to work with him. So, and then I asked him about his email. Uh, his, his email, uh, he didn't really use email like that or whatever. Okay, so I got a first name, no last name, and no email address. So I finally get the estimate to him, right? But I, I never hear from the guy. I think it's like a, then, I, then I, a month and a half goes by, and then I finally hear something where he says, oh, man, I guess he didn't see it for whatever reason. He didn't see it. And a month and a half later, he sees it, right? And then he hits me up. But he doesn't just accept the estimate. He wants me to come back out to make sure I got everything. And I was like, uh, I mean, I could try to find some time, but you know, I'm trying to be nice to this guy. I don't, because he's a referral. The, the guy who referred him is thorough. You know what I mean? Like he's referred me to like six, seven other people in this same development. And all the work has been thorough. All the people have been good. Went over there, everything seemed to be okay. Looking at stuff, he's telling me about a new project for a custom uh, project he wanted me to do. Fine. And I'm extremely busy right now, right? So I went and, and did the new estimate. About, it was, it was, it was, usually I try to get an estimate out in a day or two. This one, it was like three or four days later. But he got the estimate. He accepted, wanted me to stop by, pick up a check. He didn't want to do credit cards and all that. Fine. I still got to make time to stop by to pick up a check. This house ain't down the street. So I don't know. It was like a few days later. I'm like, I'm gonna come pick up the check tonight. And then I didn't make it that night. I had to send them another message, tell them I'll be there tomorrow instead. Okay, so the next day comes. All right, y'all, this is where it gets, <laughs> this way the dude start tripping, man. I don't know, I don't know what I understand. Did that night I said, okay, I'm gonna be at your house. And I gave him a time, like, I think it was like 7.30. Now, my fault, we left a little late and then I had to, my wife was with me. And then we, I, I didn't know she didn't have any gas in her vehicle. Y'all married dudes know what I'm talking about. She never has gas in her vehicle. I don't know where it goes. It's like somebody siphons the gas out and when they know I'm gonna drive the car. It's crazy, you know what I mean? I don't know, she sets me, it's like a setup. But, so I had to stop and get gas. So, we, you know, we do that. I get the gas, get to his house. I'm about a half an hour late. My bad, I'm half an hour late. But he answers the door, he already has an attitude. Okay, okay, then he tells me about uh, that the people next door were getting some work done by um, a guy and that, you know, I got stiff competition now because the guy next door, you know, the customer said he does good work and he went over there and looked at the work and looked good. The guy came and asked him if he had anything that he wanted him to do. He, I got stiff competition. and he's, But he's, you know, he got a big grin on his face while he's talking. I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm getting a little bothered, but I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? I was, and I told him, like, well, I, don't, I don't have any competition, you know, because I don't. I don't. Once I, you know, the way I see it, once I deal with people, I got to make their mind. You are customer. You are mine until I stop working, right? Because once you, you know, once you deal with my company, once you work, once you deal with the finisher, ain't no going back. Ain't no going back to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no going out there to look for somebody else. This is this is the last stop. This is the final destination. You understand what I mean? So. 
but he kept telling me about this dude. And I'm like, okay, um, all right. Then he wanted a contract. He was like, oh, you know, um, so where's your contract? I was like, contract? I'm thinking like, dude, I don't do contract. Like, this is such a small amount. I don't do contracts on jobs this small. I got a whole CRM that would estimate. You accept it. You give me the deposit. You receive a receipt showing that you paid for the deposit for all this work to be done. All the, everything's in here. Like, it's, I don't really think I'm, then he was talking about, uh, oh, well, it's not how I usually work. I usually work with a contract. Okay. Well, if you want a contract, you can write one up. You can write something on a piece of paper. I'll sign it, I guess, depending on what it says, but it's just not necessary for this little bit of work. Like, it's like a day of work, dude. I don't just make contracts for every job. So he, go, he gives me the check. At this point, now, I should have just been like, at that point, all right, you know what? Never mind. But I went ahead, I'm trying to work with this guy. I don't know why I'm trying like this, you know? So then we get up, walking towards the door, and then this dude jumped off the deep end. He jumped off the deep, jump off the deep end, man. He was like, yeah, you know, I, I don't even worry about having locks on my door. Now, mind you, we're in a nice development. It's not like we ain't in the hood, we ain't nowhere shady, nothing like that. We're in a very, very nice development. This house is probably every bit of 4,000 square feet. He was like, yeah, I don't worry about using locks on my doors because I got a 44 Magnum, like a snub nose or whatever. He described his gun. And I'm like, what is it? I don't know what he's talking about. You know what I mean? Like locks and stuff. We ain't talking about locks. What are you talking about? Like, then it didn't, um, I stepped foot out the door and he was like, yeah, you know what I mean? So, you know, I don't play about my money. And I caught that, like, but I didn't put the two together at the, at the moment. I'm just thinking you don't play about your money. So I turned around and I was like, look, man, I ain't been in business all these years by stealing people's money. And then that was it. You know what I mean? He kind of like, I kind of walked away, he kind of closed the door. One thing I've never had in all my times is a customer tell me that I straight up, like, you know, have a veiled threat. He didn't say straight up, I'll shoot you if you don't, if you play with my money. He didn't say that, but a veiled threat which is, you know, he gives all the inferences and just lets you know without literally telling you that. And I try to put it to talk it up to like, man, he's an older dude. He just be talking, you know, how sometimes these older guys stuck in their ways and they just talk and, and the, the, but the irritant thing was the more I thought about it, the more angry I got. Cause I was just like, not even on the customer thing. I'm like, man to man. Dude, I ain't never had a, another man just threaten me like that in real life. And it's just, that's just what it is. And then and then we just continue on. Like, you know, nothing ever happened. I just, I just, there's no way I could do it. No way I could do it. So this dude had to get fired before we even started. You understand? I gave it a couple days to think about it just to like make sure maybe I'll get, uh, I'll, I'll, once I think about it a little more and then I'll bring it down, maybe I just, and I'll talk to him, but no. I just, the, the more time went on, the more frustrated and irritated I got. I was mad I didn't slap him with the check. You know what I mean? When we standing there, ball the check up and throw it at him or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just ridiculous. Which, don't do that. Don't ball the check, don't throw it at the customer because then you'll be all suited up and all that. Don't do that. I'm just saying, I was frustrated and I wish I would've just handed this check back then at that moment. But I had to end up sending them an email, calling them letting them know that this is not gonna be a partnership. This is this is the end of our business relationship. Here's why. Whether he agrees or not is irrelevant. You know what I mean? Like, it, I didn't. I never even cashed a check because I had other deposits and I went to the, the cat put these checks in and I got his check and like I said, I looked at and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't put it in my bank account with my other nice people money. You see what I'm saying? I ain't wanna mix this 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 uh, irritating person in with all my nice people money, all my good energy money with negative energy money. You see what I'm saying? No. And then all the what all week I'm just be thinking about going to his house. I'm gonna get mad because I'm gonna go talk to the to have to work with the guy who who, who gave me a veiled threat before we even work together. No. Nah. Nope. Nope. Customer had to get fired. And I'm just telling you, you're gonna you might have times like that where it's just a conversation. Who knows? I don't know what his issue was. I came late that night. I came about half an hour late. Was it that, was that like the, he was just getting irritated. So he thought that, that the solution was to tell the contractor that he was going to shoot him. <laughs> like, is that, is that what we, what we're doing now? Is that where we are in America? 
Come on, man. So remember, you don't have to do that. You don't have to put up with that. You don't have to deal with that. You're going to lose customers, and sometimes it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes you got to fire customers, even if you don't want to. That's only over the past five, over, like been over five years, and that's only the third time I've ever had to fire a customer. You know? Um, I've never I've never actually been fired from a job. Even with this guy, he talked all this stuff and was still wanting me to do the work. Crazy. But um, let me know what you think. What kind of stories you got at times where you had to fire customers? Because <laughs> sometimes in this business, you got to make hard decisions. Uh, or you get, and you got to hurry. And, and it's also another reason why you got to hold on to your money. Hold on to that money because you don't want to be dependent on a guy like that. Like he got, I got this $1,200 check in my hand. And it's easy money, dude. It's some drywall pair around some windows and stuff. It's very easy money. But at what cost? If he's like that now, am I going to go in there and then I, um, little drywall dust gets on the carpet some, somehow and he flips out or something like that? Is, is he, is he going to be like that? If, uh, if I tell him I'll be there around 9 and I get there at 9.05, is he going to be like, oh, you're late and, and, and give me like, you know, the, the, the third degree about it? I don't want none of that. So, <laughs> any people like that, I get out of my life. I don't deal with it. And I don't think you should either. All right? That's the story, man. That's it. That's why I had to fire somebody. But other times where people left me. And, you know, it all works out in the end, man. I got a roster right now full of wonderful, great customers. Uh, I got a couple realtors on the roster. I have I have some uh, commercial companies, some, some large companies on the, on the roster that I deal with from time to time. So... It's, things are looking great, man. All right, so, like, comment, and subscribe. Daryl, also known as The Finisher. Hey, stay safe, be blessed, and remember, if the trades don't work, nothing else does.